This is Ken Forrester, Executive Director at Momenta. Welcome to our Digital Thread Podcast, produced by, for, and about digital industry leaders. In this series of conversations, we capture insights from the best and brightest minds in digital industry. Their executives, entrepreneurs, advisors, and other thought leaders. What they have in common is like our team at Momenta, they are deep industry operators. We hope you find these podcasts informative. And as always, we welcome your comments and suggestions. Good day and welcome. Today, it's my great pleasure to welcome Francesco Bonfilio, the Chief Executive Officer of Gaia X, a digital ecosystem initiative working to create an environment in which data can be shared and stored under the control of data owners. Francesco has been at the forefront of digital innovation for over 30 years, working across high technology, military, and commercial software leaders across Europe. Prior to joining Gaia X this year, he was CEO of Engineering D Hub, a leading technology in Italy. Living in Italy in the countryside out of Milan, married and father of three sons, he loves music and played in several independent live and record productions since the 80s. Francesco believes in the power of collective intelligence, lateral thinking, and teamwork as a propeller for transformation in the business as well in the whole life. So Francesco, especially with that last bit of lateral thinking, I absolutely love. Welcome to our Digital Thread podcast. Thank you very much for having me today. It's a real pleasure to be here. Actually, I'm talking from my home office out of Milan, as you just said. And welcome to our Digital Thread podcast audience. Yeah, thank you for uh, taking the time today. So you and I were having a prior conversation, and I should just give a quick call out to uh, Gaddy Lenz, who was one of our podcast guests here later last year, I should just say, and actually focused very much on mobility applications in Germany at this point. And he mentioned Gaia X as an interesting standard that he thought was going to make a difference. And that placed in my mind the spark that we ought to get a little deeper on understanding what Gaia X is. So I'm so glad we were able to put this together. I always like to start this with talking about one's own digital thread, you know, really the one or more thematic threads that really define their industry journey. What would you consider to be your digital thread, Francesco? Well, to make a long story short, and to make it interesting, I believe as well, My digital thread is a real bottom-up kind of career. I started working in the early 80s when software did not even exist, per se, but it was mainly firmware, i.e., say, the binary logic built into chips. So I saw the move from firmware to object-oriented programming languages, from real-time embedded software to cloud systems, and also the move, I keep saying this, from tangible technology, which is, I mean, the one that was used to instrument machines and make them automated and human controlled from moving a motor to, I don't know, controlling the trajectory of a satellite into intangible technology, which is that one that is so independent today, so intelligent, if you want, and autonomous, that you are no more really sure about what it is really doing for you. So from moving your money from a bank account to analyzing your email and telling you on a daily basis what you have to do or what you have been told to do by others through artificial intelligence. So I moved from the hardware as an hardware engineer, my background is in electronics, to software engineering, to system analysis, project management, team management, business unit management, up to technical executive roles as CTO for HPE or business executive and board members for several large organizations. But I believe that what makes the difference to me, at least, is the capability to understand all the value chain of IT and what we today call digital, having started really from the bottom line and having understood all the nuances of technology. I would summarize your career path as full stack. And actually, that's the way we like to hire and the way that we like to create interesting companies in terms of the founders. Uh, Usually, they have a very similar early trajectory, i.e. they've started at, a, you know, maybe at a hardware level, a mechatronics level, and then work their way up because we find it gives, especially in the industrial IoT, you know, a broad and very deep perspective. So with that, let's jump right into this concept of data sovereignty. What does that term data sovereignty mean to you? Having control on your data. So 
where they are stored, who can have access to them, what they can be used for. And sovereignty is a necessary but not sufficient element for the ethical use of data, which implies a respectful use of data compliant to the rules and to the laws, but also a fair distribution of the value produced through your data, which is yet far from being a reality. But believe me, this is going to become one of the real revolution of the future world we live in. So in other words, sovereignty is a key necessary element to transition from, let me say, a traditional world of economy, of production, of products and services into the new world where anything from our life to our business and our products and our services it got an added value or an augmented value, which is related to data. Given data is a unique raw material, different from any other raw material, it can be produced by anyone, regardless of the richness of their countries or their geographical location, and can be reproduced forever, then we need to have sovereign data platforms. We need to have ethical use of the data guaranteed, and we need to have also some fair share of the revenues that will be produced more and more through our data. And when I say our, I mean our business, our company, our enterprises, as well as our private data, of course. The control aspect is probably what most of us would associate with the word sovereignty, but I like this idea of bringing in both the ethical use of it and then fair distribution of value. I think those three bring really some interesting dimensions to this as well. So let's jump right into Gaia X. Tell us a little bit about the origin story of this company and this initiative. Sure. Well, Gaia X, first of all, let me explain the name because that's possibly the first question everybody asks. Gaia is the godness of fertility, and the objective of this project is to develop a flourish digital economy for Europe and beyond. And X is the letter of transition, the letter of the change. So Gaia X is a real big transition project to build the new digital economy of Europe. It was born as a governmental project to build the German sovereign cloud by the German Ministry of Economy and Energy, Mr. Peter Altemeyer. So it was originally funded by Angela Merkel and the Minister Altemeyer through the ministry, and then all of a sudden France aggregated because they wanted to implement as well their national sovereign cloud. So it became a Franco-German cloud project. But the reality was and still is that everybody in Europe had the same need. So Italy came around and then many other countries. And so in 2020, after just less than one year from the initial project start from Germany, GAIA-X became an international non-profit association with now more than 300 members from 25 countries, not only European ones. Everyone is working together to build this new infrastructure, this new data infrastructure platform that I would briefly describe. So we decided to move from an association which was constituted in September 2020 and it is an AI SBL, so Association Internationale Sans But Lucrative. And all these members are grouped in many working groups. We have more than 20 international working groups working on the several aspects of this new data infrastructure that we are building. And we are developing three main deliverables. One is the specification of GAIA-X. So we are describing the architecture of GAIA-X. We are describing the standards applicable to Gaia-X, and we are also describing the rules, the policies that apply to any Gaia-X service. So we are making sure there will be one contract, one set of rules, and one common architectural framework implemented by anyone who wants to deliver a Gaia-X compliant service. The second thing is we are developing a, a huge open source project to give out a real implementation of GAIA-X as an open source, so free usage. So it will be for those companies in particular, you can imagine small and medium enterprise that cannot afford the development of a specification, even though a fantastic specification. So we decided to specify it and build it. But not only, the third key deliverable is the so-called label. So we have developed a concept of labeling 
that is extremely innovative. So we will be delivering together with the GAIA-X architecture services embedded in the technology that will take care of verifying the compliance of the service runtime and ensure that it is exactly as declared. So in other words, GAIA-X is a large, you can imagine it as a large meta operating system. It is like the internet connecting several nodes that will constitute a network of computing nodes where data can be shared across and all together they will be an extremely powerful computing engine and it is a model completely different from the actual and traditional cloud model which is instead vertical so in other words data cannot be grouped anymore in one single place either even though huge and this is the hyperscaler model but data are growing geographically distributed and in an uncontrolled and tropic way that's why we need to move from the current model, which is verticalized, into a new model of cloud, which is distributed and decentralized. This is what GAIA-X is doing, and is doing it from Europe, for Europe, and beyond Europe. What are uh, some of the key use cases and, and early wins that you've seen leveraging the GAIA-X model at this point? And I understand it's still very early in the path, but I imagine you guys have already done a fair amount of, I'll call it, you know, kind of proof of concepts. Yes, sure. And to go back to the name of the project, so Gaia X, the X letter represents this transition, this transformation. And you can imagine the X as the upper part of the X and the lower part of the X. The lower part of the X is the so-called infrastructure ecosystem, which collects all the existing infrastructure, the existing cloud, private, public, hybrid, edge, and all the IoT platform, anything where, let me say, data resides. The upper part of the X is the so-called data spaces. So the data spaces are the numerical representation of uh, analog or physical data spaces, like a city, like a school, like a street, like a car. So anything can be represented and become a data space. And the objective of GAIA-X is to build European data spaces where data can be shared across actors and through the data sharing, new value can be created for all the participants of this federation. And the federation is built, federating, so putting together different types of technology and architecture in an open, non-proprietary way, and creating this network through the so-called federation services. So on the data space side, as well as on the infrastructure side, we have specific working groups. On the data space side, we have now more than 14 regional hubs working in as many countries as you can imagine. So Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Finland, Belgium, and Greece, and I can forget always someone. Each one is working on the definition of some specific and some common data spaces for their countries or across multiple countries. For example, the work of this enormous amount of uh, people has produced nowadays, and this has been published recently, a document that collects a positioning paper that collects more than 70 use cases built in more than nine data spaces. So you can imagine like the automotive, the industry for zero, public sector, healthcare, etc. So some of these 70 use cases uh, are more mature than others and have already become projects. So we have some of the largest players working with some startups, some German working with French or Italian and all the possible permutation. We have, as you can imagine, several models of sharing the data and creating the value. For example, in automotive, where some of the largest players, you can imagine Volkswagen, Daimler and BMW, to name a few, but together with Siemens and Bosch and a hundred of other OEM and suppliers, decided to get together to share their data together, the producer with the supplier, to build additional value, quality and sustainability all together. Because this is the only way if you really want to implement ESG or sustainability. In the transportation side, our members are thinking about the future of mobility with multimodality across means end-to-end -end interfaces across booking systems, transportation systems, passport and control systems. In the healthcare, our members are designing how to share healthcare medical records between hospitals, research institutions, pharmaceutical institutions, and patients 
to create an ecosystem of efficient prevention and precision medicine and to put the basis of the future uh, genomics researches. In the research data, we are creating a common platform to connect several research institutions and universities to share data, algorithms, analysis, and reports to accelerate the development of new products, new therapies, the development of new materials, and so on and so forth. So for each of these few examples I made, you can imagine there is tens, sometimes hundreds of companies, large, small users, providers, or academics working together to define the use cases. They create consortium, which can become real companies, and there is a business case, and all of them are building these use cases of data sharing on top of a GAIA-X architecture. So there is a countless examples where the creation of a common European data space can not only ease the current business of companies and the life of citizens, but also, I say, and more importantly, create a completely new business and completely new opportunities for our future, which is the Gaia part of the Gaia-X. So we want to create new opportunity for all of our countries and beyond Europe as well. This might seem like a bit of a simplistic question, but given your own full stack background and decades of experience in the IT space, you've no doubt seen the centralization, decentralization of data and compute. Now, of course, we're calling that roughly cloud and edge in some sense. How does Gaia-X work with and leverage of both the original cloud architecture, but now becoming more and more this distributed edge architecture? Yeah, this is funny because you're right. I mean, I've seen so many times a history repeating. So when I explain cloud, I keep saying that I see cloud in a kind of three ages. The first age was the age of public cloud only, and it failed miserably more than 10 years ago because everybody realized you cannot move application portfolio, which are 80% legacy and non-cloud native into public cloud. Then we moved into the hybrid cloud and almost immediately to hybrid multi-cloud because everybody realized that moving to the cloud was also a risk in terms of locking. Now we are in this hybrid multi-cloud age, but the new age has already started and it is the age of distributed cloud, distributed computing. If we look back, let's say that the cloud we have today is no much different from the old time mainframe. So it's a big concentration of data and computing power. The more you concentrate, the more efficiency you have. It's a factory model, like in any manufacturing factory. Now, the problem is that the raw material, the data, is no more controllable, like I said before. So you need to have a different model. You need to be close to the data, like you need to be close to the crops if you want to build you know, high-quality food. And I believe that Gaia-X is the necessary, but so far missing, cloud operating system to operate the transition from the well-known vertical model of cloud, the so-called hyperscaler or governmental model, to the horizontal model based on federations of trusted nodes. So this is a necessary shift when data, by definition, distributed in an uncontrollable way and cannot simply be collected all in one place like in the past. Data and therefore intelligence or security or networking nowadays are physiologically distributed and growing in an entropic way. So the deterministic model of a central cloud, like of a central mainframe, does not fulfill the power of the data anymore. The two models will survive, of course, but the distributed model will prevail, I think, in the medium to long run, which I mean in five to 10 years, Most of the data will be distributed in federated, decentralized cloud infrastructure instead of being centralized into big data centers of the hyperscalers. We would fully agree. Our focus, of course, is operational technology. And on the OT side, given your own experience, you realize a lot of the data is still sitting there and a lot of the compute is still sitting at the edge as it's never been centralized in. And it's interesting, we've seen a number of predictions as of late, and I know one even tied in with the Next Generation Internet Initiative at the EU about where that processing will happen in the future. It's an 80-20 change, if you will, 80% the cloud today, 20% the edge, and effectively swapping by 2025. And that will have interesting impacts across everything. We've had some good discussions at a conference last week, an online conference, 
with an edge uh, technology provider who sees this, of course, as an opportunity for what they're providing, but sees it as what they call the continuous cloud. So going yeah. from you know your, your true cloud all the way out to the edge. So I think the most interesting architectural changes, uh, Francesco, are still ahead of us. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah it's definitely. not client server. It's not mainframe PC. Absolutely. It's, uh, yeah, it's getting interesting. So Gaia-X is a decidedly European initiative. And it's not surprising because Europe, of course, has been leaders in such governance initiatives such as GDPR, which truly is a global initiative these days. Is Gaia-X a truly a global initiative? Yes, it is. Absolutely. GAIAX is not building new regulations, nor new standards. We are translating the word trust, which everybody talks about, into technology. And God knows how much we need that today, because everybody talks about technology and trusted technology and trusted cloud, but actually translated into something tangible is not being done yet. Also notably, GAIAX, yes, it is an initiative that was started in Europe and by European companies. But it is not a European initiative in strict terms because we are hosting all the largest non-European cloud service providers in our members because we are open to anyone regardless of their nationality or their size. And we are collaborating with countries out of Europe that want to implement exactly the same GAIA-X model of sovereignty in their country. And I can mention China more than South Korea or Japan, because what we are building corresponds to the, I believe this is my view of it, because I asked the question myself several times, and I'm not particularly scared about inclusive approaches. Actually, I believe that if you really want to build something new and useful, you have to work with everybody. But what I truly believe is the differentiator is that we are building the correspondence in technology to those ethical and civil principles of Europe, like freedom of circulation, sovereignty, private property, uh, trust, respect, but that are common and shared by any civil and democratic state and republic around the world. So we are simply speaking, trying to fulfill the need of everybody and not just of Europe. So in that sense, it was an initiative started in Europe by European companies, yes, but it is not, strictly speaking, funded by the European Commission, just to be very clear, or by any government, any European government directly. We are not funded. All the money we have come from the subscription fee of our members. We are open to all members. And what we are building is definitely not just for Europe, but like I said already a few times for Europe and beyond. Yeah, I appreciate the clarification about the connection to the EU. Prior conversation, you had mentioned that you had just been speaking, uh, keynoting actually, at the Digital Switzerland Initiative earlier this week. And so it you know, truly is an inclusive, if you will, standard across both European and global countries in that regard. Absolutely. I, uh, I, I noted that you recently announced your first hackathon and bringing what, you know, yeah. I, I like to, it was quoted, non-traditional methods to support innovation and create disruption. <laughs> Tell us a bit about how you're structuring this and what you're hoping to accomplish. Yeah, Akaton is one way we are engaging the GaiaX community, which, by the way, is not just GaiaX members, but the community is also open. Some tables are restricted to members. Some other tables are open to non-members as well. And so it's a way to engage the GaiaX community, which is made of many different races, let me say. There's large enterprises, small companies, startups, providers, users of technologies, academics. So we need to have a two-speed approach. This is what I believe. And this is what I'm trying to achieve, actually. From one side, we need a slower pace track where all the principles and the high-level decisions are taken very carefully, involving all around the table that require for the importance and the impact of the topics being treated and decision being taken, long and careful analysis. So when we think about antitrust, when we think about labeling, when we think about immunity, or we think about jurisdictions, legislation, and that kind of stuff requires, let me say, the right pace of time to be addressed in the proper way. On the other side, we need a faster pace with a fail-fast approach, quick prototyping, rough consensus, POCs, MVPs development, where we can experiment the most advanced technologies to implement what we are drawing in pictures or describing in words in our documents 
And we need to walk the talk. And this requires disruptive approaches at times, new ideas will come to mind and I hope uh, we'll arrive also more and more by our excited and hyperactive members. So Hackathon is one of them. You know, um, Moment, uh, investors in the digital industry space and uh, so work with quite a few startups, both in the US and North America. What are some of the interesting startups that you've seen that are leveraging Gaia-X at this point? Well, there is so, so many that will not make names. But I would like to mention the technology areas where some of the startups are deeply involved, in particular in the creation of our first MVPs, minimum viable products. We have startups that first in the world developed completely distributed and open cloud stacks. We have others that developed the most advanced compute data protocols, like the Ocean Protocol, that allow for data and processing to be decoupled and to bring the compute to the data instead of the other way around, which is a, an extremely necessary mechanism for edge computing, for edge computing and federated cloud uh, infrastructures. We have other startups that are at the leading edge of the distributed ledger technology and the blockchain and have developed extremely reliable digital contract frameworks to ensure the certification of services and products and guarantee the trust in a digital manner through verifiable claims. Some of them are in Germany, by the way, some of the most important experiences in the DLT and the blockchain have occurred in Germany. And more in general, let me just say that we do not have any knowledge gap in Europe. We have possibly the best brains and we just need to put them together. And also we have other startups that have already developed distributed storage solution. This is, for example, an interesting Italian startup that had this idea to exploit for example, the spare disk that each of us has in our laptops to make available large distributed storage for almost free with the highest standards of security and adopting very smart federated, let me say, operating system. So others are leader of the DAO, the distribute, uh, so decentralized autonomous organization, which is one of the core principles we are studying within GAIA-X because we want GAIA-X to be self-certified or as I keep saying, we want to implement the concept of regulation by automation. So I am a little bit fed up of big regulations, big standards where you have to spend a lot of money, then go through huge audits, where in the end of the day, you just read documents and put a check mark on it. This is the time where technology can be self-certified, and this is possible today. But then we need to implement this regulation by automation principle and make this dream come true. So we want to implement the first and most reliable, autonomous, decentralized architecture on planet Earth. This would be my challenge. It sounds like an admirable goal, and I'm sure there will be a number of companies excited to participate in this hackathon coming up. I guess on that note, how can someone learn more about GAIA-X, perhaps becoming a member or joining this hackathon? Yeah, well, like any Acton, it's published on our social channels, and anybody can read it on LinkedIn, Twitter, and apply. We have already hundreds of applications, but more in general, we have a website with lots of information. A lot can be found on our social pages on LinkedIn and Twitter, but also we have a program of events and summit, and we have the next summit that will take place on the 18th and the 19th of November. It will be online, of course, but as well in Milan. And so don't miss it. And becoming a member is pretty easy and cheap. You can go to the site and you will find a link. You can fill a form and you will be provided with all the information you need and the support you need to understand how you can join, where you can participate, and the subscription fee. The subscription fees are annual and proportional to the size of your company in terms of revenues turnaround. And they start from 2,500 euros per year. So we have a lot of non-profit organizations or very small companies that can afford that. And I'm very proud of that. So we are a totally private organization, like I said, and we are proud to be the voice of the market. And this is the reason why we are possibly seen as influential and reliable by the European Commission and by the local governments, because we do represent the needs of the users of technology, the capabilities of the providers across Europe, and we are implementing all together like I said, an unprecedented set of features that are not existing now in the market offering. 
So becoming a member, I think it's a mission for most of our members. It's just a privilege to be part of this team and contributing to create the future of technology and not just of Europe, but for sure, the future of our European digital economy. Mm, Excellent. So I guess in closing, when you're not creating the future for the rest of us, how do you find your own inspiration? <laughs> I think I think out of the box. It is strange, but one of the lessons I learned in so many years in this job of technology is that you can only drive real transformation, real digital transformation, if you wish, if you look at the world from a different perspective. So if you look at the real world and don't try to translate it into the world you know. So I I talk to normal people. I talk to my old friends that do a completely different job and don't care or even don't understand what I'm doing as a job. I mean, we drink a beer. We don't know people who ask me, what's your job? And I try to describe this to him. And when I see his face, I realize that possibly I'm not doing well enough because I'm not creating the impact I want. I explain to young people, I participated in podcasts of young people that are curious and they want to understand more about elder people like me that are driving big projects, what that means for them. I talk to my sons and what I'm doing and I'm trying to answer to their extremely difficult questions like, so that, why should I use GaiaX instead of Google? So that really makes me, puts me in trouble and makes me spin my mind, wheels, to try to look for the right answer. And then I try to understand exactly what we need to do and also what we need to communicate to the outside world. Because believe me, I think the biggest challenge, you didn't ask the question, but I tell you the answer, the biggest challenge I have is what I call digital advocacy. In other words, most of the things we have been discussing in this podcast and most of the things I talk about in conferences and whenever I talk about my job, like a given for most of us, We tend to believe that everybody understands what digital economy is, what the power of data is, what a data space can produce. But the reality is that this is not known by most of the people. It's still very blurry. So we need to talk about it. We need to explain that without data platform, we wouldn't have even survived in the last year and a half because we could not send our kids to school. We could not buy the grocery. We could not go to work. We need to tell the people that the world needs a new generation of data infrastructure because data infrastructure is not anymore something for IT people and nerds. It's basically the backbone of our future life, and we need to get control of it. And if that is the backbone of our future life, then certainly data and, more importantly, free sovereignty of data is the blood of life. And, uh, and thus absolutely. we come back to Gaia X, the transformation of life. I absolutely love the name. So Francesco, thank you for sharing these wonderful insights with us today. Thank you. It was my pleasure. And I look forward to be your guest again, Ken. It was a real pleasure. And I hope your audience enjoyed it. I think it was very insightful, and uh, I do believe you left some great hooks in terms of future podcasts. I think we just scratched the surface of the real potential of this, and you and I before were talking about use cases in agriculture, as an example, and, and, and Industry 4.0 and other areas. So we will certainly have other podcasts in the future where we can deep dive on some of those. So this has been Francesco Bonflio the Chief Executive Officer of Gaia-X, and if I can say so, creating the future of data sovereignty. Thank you for listening, and please join us next week for our next Momenta Digital Thread podcast. Thank you, and have a great day. You've been listening to the Momenta Digital Thread podcast series. We hope you've enjoyed the discussion, and as always, we welcome your comments and suggestions. Please check our website at momenta.one for archived versions of podcasts, as well as resources to help with your digital industry journey. Thank you for listening.